Hello! In this tutorial I'll try to make a peeling effect, to demonstrate the use of the export operator in thinking particles, and how we can access the exported particles in Max Script. The particle system used in this scene is very simple. We only need two particles groups. We use the object to particle operator to transform a sphere in particle. Then we fragment the sphere instance. In the end we export the fragments so we can access them in the Max script. We run the script, then the scene is ready to render. Let's get it started. From standard primitives create a new geosphere in the scene. Set segments value to 6. Make sure the geodesic base type is Ecosa. Set the radius to 40. Add a thinking particle system to the scene. Select the Modify tab to open the TP user interface. Create two particles groups. Name the first group spheres, and the second fragments. Select the sphere group and change its color. Select Master Dynamic. Disable Edit on the fly, and enable Show Mesh. Create a new dynamic set. Name it Create Sphere. From the Operator's drop-down list choose Generator. Add an object to Particle Operator to the set. Click on the Pick Object button and select the Geosphere from one of the viewports. Select it from the list, and assign it to the Sphere group. Enable Instance Shape and click hide. This will hide the original object. Now let's add a material to the sphere. From the operator's drop down list choose material, and add a shape material to the set. Link it to the object to particle operator. Open the material editor and drag a material as instance in the material slot. I use a final render, car paint material. You can use whatever you want. Create another dynamic set and name it Fragment Sphere. From the Operator's drop-down list choose Initiator. Add AP Pass Operator to the set. From the Group drop-down list choose Sphere. From the Operator's drop-down list choose Shape. Add a Fragment Operator to the set, and link it to the Sphere group. In order to fragment the Sphere, we have to animate the threshold from 1 to 0 but first set the group to fragments. Now all the fragments that are created will go to this group. Select the fragments group and change its color too. Set it to a light green to see it better in the viewport. Enable auto key and move the time slider to the frame 30. Set the threshold to zero. As you can see in the viewport, one means no fragment, and zero means 100% fragmented. Disable auto key now, and increase the time of the animation to 200 frames. Now let's change some parameters for the fragments. As you can see the fragments disappear until the end of the animation. We have to increase the lifespan for these particles. Set the lifespan to 200. Let's add some randomness. Set the smooth and distance angle to 16 degrees, and the radius to 30%. Now the fragments grow from bottom to top. Go to sorting and set it the other way around. Top to bottom. Increase the speed to 4. Add some variation.
leave the remaining shape type to hollow. Enable Tessel it. Choose face center and set the tension to 20. We do this to get more detail because we will use a bend modifier and we need more vertexes to bend it smoothly. Play with the tessel it rollout until you get the shape you desire for the fragments. Once you are done create a new dynamic set. Name it export fragments. In this set we will convert the fragment particles to objects, so we will be able to access them in Max script. Add AP pass operator to the set. From the group drop down list choose fragments. From the operators drop down list choose export. Add an export operator to the set and link it to the fragments group. This will export each particle to an object with the transformation animation and visibility animation. Set the quality to 100. This shows how accurate the export will be. More or less keyframes on each particle. When ready click export. There will appear a progress bar and you have to wait until it gets to 100%. If you are not happy with the export you can always use the remove button to delete the exports. Now we will hide the thinking particle system so we won't see the particles and the exported objects in the same time. Drag the time slider to see the animation. Hit render. All the objects are visible in the renderer. You can see that the exported objects scale up from zero until they get to the correct position. The objects should be invisible until that position. If we right click on a frame we can see we have animation also on visibility. So why they are all visible? You have to select all the exported objects. Right click in the viewport and choose object properties. Set the rendering control by object. Now all the controls are enabled, including the visibility. Now all renders fine. Create a new geosphere. Set the radius to 40 and align it to the initial sphere. We will use this geosphere as a shell for the object. Press shift and drag the geosphere upwards to make a copy. This second sphere will act as a mask. Name it mask volume select. Go to frame 30 and animate the sphere. Hide the exported objects for now so we can see better what we are doing. Select the red sphere and add a volume select modifier. Set the stack selection level to face. This will select the faces of the object. In the select by volume enable mesh object. Select the mask object from the scene.
In red you can see the selected faces as the objects intersect. Add a delete mesh modifier to the red geosphere. As you can see in the front view the selected faces are deleted. The problem is they reappear as they get deselected. To solve this problem we need to take a different approach. Delete the animation keys from the mask object. Turn auto key on. Go to the frame 30 and increase the radius until the mask totally covers the red sphere. Hide the mask so we can see the effect. Now all it's fine. Unhide the exported objects. Drag the time slider to see the animation. Now the only thing left to do is to run the script. To run the script you have to first select the objects you want to affect in the scene. From the Max Script menu start the Max Script Editor. Browse the project files to find the script. The name of the script is tppeeling.ms. We will pass through the script a little bit later. For now, you should know that what this script does, is to apply to each selected object a Mesh Smooth modifier, and a Bend modifier, and to animate the Bend modifier from 0 to minus 280 degrees. Click Tools, Evaluate All. Now if we drag the timeline, we see that all the exported fragments have a Mesh Smooth modifier and an animated bend modifier. Note that all the fragments are bending outwards. Open the script again to take a closer look. Most of the script tries to handle the bend direction part. To do this we have to find the middle point between the selected objects. First we make a position array to store the positions of all the selected objects. Then an array for each element of the position X, Y, and Z. We use the Amin Max script function to find the smallest number in the array. Then we check if the minimum number value is less than zero. If it is we make the number positive. If you put a minus in front of a negative number it will become positive. We use this to temporarily move all the positions on positive axes. If we add this difference to each XYZ values, all the positions will have positive values. If all the values are positive we can make an average. If few of them were negative the average would not be correct. In the end, we will get a new position which will represent the center of the selection. The vector from this point to the object, will represent the direction of each bend modifier, so all the fragments will bend outwards. Now we check if a bent or a mesh smooth modifier already exists. If yes, delete it. Then for every the object in the selection, if the object is geometry do the following. 
change the wireframe color of the object to see if it was affected. Center the pivot of the object. If you do not center the pivot each fragment will have the pivot in the same place like the parent sphere, and the positions will be the same. Then we create a ray from the center point to the object. Then we create a transformation matrix from the ray. We use the rotate pivot only function to rotate the pivot of each object as the transformation matrix created from the ray. This function takes the object as argument and the transformation matrix, and rotates the pivot after the transformation matrix. Then we add the Mesh Smooth modifier with one iteration, and the Bend modifier with the Bend axis set to zero. Zero means the first option, which is the x-axis. Then, we turn Animate on, and we create keyframes for the angle value of the Bend modifier on frame zero, and on frame 180. I hope it was useful. Thanks for watching. Visit www.community.ro for more.